Is owning up to your own stereotype helpful or hurtful in the long term? Because we got to break down why these Asian guys keep making these videos. Yeah, let's run some of the clips in question. I about 40 Japanese guys. I about 10 Korean guys. From all the Korean guys, there was one average, Asian average. Well, the Japanese, they have around 14, while the Korean, the most that I had were about seven to nine. From the four Chinese guys, I three of them had micro which is just like a, a, a sad egg on top of a nest of hair. Boom, Andrew, this is from I Am Korea. I mean, clearly, Andrew, he struck on a nerve and I, I would call an Instagram real hit series. Yeah, and, it, and this is not the first video of this type of content where it's kind of like, uh, you know, I don't want to say it's meant to make fun of Asian guys or maybe it's meant to be super honest or truthful or whatever they think is truthful or trolly. Or, or just having the conversations that maybe previously were never available. Exactly. I, there's a bunch of reasons why people make this content, but I'm going to go through some possible reasons why you guys, and we're going to have this conversation on like whether we think kind of leaning into stereotypes of your group is helpful or hurtful in the long term. So please hit that like button. Check out other episodes of the Hot Pop Boys. Check out Smile Last Sauce at SmileLastSauce.com. Mm. I'll say this. I mean, I, I think it's got to be clear. He's in Korea. He's in Seoul right now. I do think that it's different than asking it if he was in America. Okay. But I have had people, I feel like we've seen people ask this in, in America. Like yeah, we've, for sure, for sure. I mean, but it's not as common because I believe from other races, it would be perceived as more racist. Yeah, well, obviously, if you're a non-Asian woman in Korea and you've been with Asian men or namely Korean men, then you're gonna feel more comfortable speaking up about your experience because clearly you're not like racist towards them, even if your experiences may have come up short, as this girl said. Well, no, Because she's uh, been with a lot of dudes. Yeah, there's a Bulgarian apparently data scientist like i think she ha like has a stem degree from bulgaria so i'm saying so she was using her stem degree to measure the stem on those men that's crazy um i'll say this i think also younger gen z and this i've noticed this across race i've noticed this in the black american community the mexican american community even the white american community they're way more willing to have a trolley internet gamer sense of humor about their own group group stereotypes yeah because i think a general consensus of like i guess people of a different generation or even a different like community may view this content as embarrassing for Asian men. Like, oh, why are you talking about this? Or why are you like putting out this content? This is not helping us. You know what I mean? It's not no. helping Asian guys break the stereotype. And you're saying that that's coming from an older generation perspective. Yeah, yeah, I think so, for sure. No, I feel like Gen Z, I don't want to say they feel empowered by it, but they're, dude, if you've ever, if you guys know about gamer culture and uh, a larger portion of Gen Z is gamers than any other previous generation. It's sort of like an anything goes type of attitude. Mm. Like nothing is off the table. Right, no, it's true that they talk about stereotypes of all groups of people. Like if you've ever gamed or seen gamer streams, obviously it gets very racist very quickly with the jokes. But the Everybody jo towards everybody. Right, but the joke is that whether you're black, Asian, white, Indian, Arab, whatever, you're making jokes on there about each other and they're like the harshest jokes possible yeah i have a uh, african friend from mali who gets into it with like just black american kids even playing 2k oh yeah time. oh not to mention the things that women hear on the gaming so it's kind of that culture and i guess i guess those people feel like it's okay because normalizing this conversation isn't going to change the facts if those are the facts right if people believe something so deeply the previous generation let's just say 30 and over andrew was like don't talk about it don't talk about it but everybody's like but if that's just the global stereotype why can't we talk about it so i guess normalizing this conversation if it is a conversation is it helpful or hurtful in the long term because I think there's this sense that Asian guys are always battling this stereotype, right? Of ha packing smaller peens than other people, right? Right, in the same way that I guess what, black American or black guys would have the stere the reverse, the yeah, inverse yeah, stereotype. Yeah, exactly. So uh, it's like, is it better for your life? And I think it depends on the person, actually. My answer is it depends on the person. If you are a guy who you're like, hey, I'm not packing a small peen or maybe I'm, I'm packing such a big peen 
this stereotype doesn't affect me, or I am one of these guys who's packing a small peen so I can do nothing but lean into it and own up to it because I cannot act like I have a big peen. Are you saying more of the Ken Jong? like maybe Matthew Moore yeah. to a lesser extent, Jimmy O'Gang, yeah. like thing but, where it's like, I'm a double down on this way, right. this shrimpiness you oh. view me with. But yeah, or maybe it's to make people feel better and less sensitive about the conversation because why, and this is a real, uh, why would you define your entire personality or your self-worth just based on that one body part, right? It doesn't right. really make sense. Like your worth as a human being is so much more than just that. Of course, that is a thing that in culture and but, but it's particularly in western culture because in asia people generally from my understanding of asian culture don't really think like that right right they right. don't play into the well, de-measuring contest as much well, as the western what hemisphere. about this response from this chinese guy that the korean guy interviewed let's play the clip okay here's the thing that queen uh -huh. said like chinese guys are small right but at chinese social media platform yes we all saying that korean guys private part are smaller <laughs> i mean that's Exactly, Andrew. This is what you're referring to when the guy was like, well, you know, like the guys who were the biggest victims of that was the Chinese guys because they actually had the worst. And then the Chinese guy thinks about it and he goes, shoot, yeah, but for me, I don't care because mine is big. Right, right, right. Is that a little bit like saying, for example, somebody's from a poor country, but you happen to be the 1% in that country that's rich. Like I'm saying, let's say, for example, uh, Indonesia is not a rich country, but you happen to be a rich person from Indonesia. If somebody says Indonesia is poor, they're both right and wrong because they're wrong for your family, but they might be right in the macro sense of the entire country. Sure. Yes, I think so. And it like, again, it depends on your own kind of mental fortitude on how much you can take. And if you've decided in your life, you are going to attack stereotypes head on and try to stop it as it comes, like this is the stereotype, and you're just trying to block it completely and push it back, or you're gonna deflect it and like parry it into something else. You know what I mean? Right. Or, or you kind of like, you know, so it's how you've decided to live your life, and there's honestly, there's no wrong way to do it. There's right. different ways for different people and that's the tough thing. But let's get into the comment section, David. Um, yeah, real quick. I just wanted to say that I, I think it's like interesting because every community is making fun of itself now. I've seen black meme pages address like single mothers. I've seen Mexican meme pages address illegal immigration. I've seen number of white comedians call themselves racist superiority complex Karens. So every group is sort of like talking about how other groups may perceive them or their generalized stereotype, whether it's true or not for their particular family or not. Um, there's somebody said she's turning Asian guys into a science experiment. And somebody said, men, remember, when you sleep with a foreign woman, you are representing your entire nation. That's hilarious. Um, somebody said that uh, some Asian women were mad as this Korean woman was mad at her saying that how can she come and like belittle the men? But then they were saying that a lot of men aren't really mad at this Bulgarian scientist because at the end of the day, she's still talking about getting with a lot of the men. So I, this is a funny point where it's like, if you hook up with a girl and she did it and she hooked up with a lot of dudes, but then if you ask her from a scientific standpoint what she thought about it and then she gives you the answer That's that might guess, be offensive or stereotypical. Yeah. Stereotypical answer. Then, uh, do you wish she never existed? <laughs> it's kind of a funny question, man. Well, I noticed that there was more comments criticizing the Bulgarian scientist lady from Asian women than even Asian men. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, because like you said, I don't know. Somebody said it's giving fetishization. She is a sex tourist. And someone said, no, sex tourists are white guys visiting Thailand. And then someone said, no, she's just a girl being bold and comfortable in her skin and just doing what she wants. Mm. Um, somebody said there's big and small in every ethnic group, but some smalls, some have more smalls than bigs, and some ethnics have more bigs than smalls. And then this correct guy, this Korean guy said, to all my Korean brothers, it's not about the size. It is about the field that I was playing in was just way too damn big. That's funny. Um, and and that, that, to me, like, jokes like that, I feel like are more of the parry. Like, when you take the stereotype and you kind of, like, deflect it somehow, you know, versus, like, trying to stop and be like, deny it, hard deny, hard no, and say, no, it's not true. Now, of course, it might not be true for you. It might not be true for you and your friends. That's totally fine. But it's clearly true for some people, and people keep joking about it constantly right you know what i noticed man 
all the big data is available in 2024 and the gamer trolley, like I'm in the PlayStation lobby or, uh, you know, modern warfare, call of duty lobby, uh, culture is out there. So it's like, everybody is just saying everything. And it's really interesting because I think a lot of stereotypes there is, listen guys, I'm not saying stereotypes are true. Obviously, they're not 100% true. Some stereotypes are not even 50% true, but they're probably at least 30% true because why else would they be a widespread stereotype? So I'm just saying like, I think, I don't know what it's going to lead to, but I like Gen Z's attitude about broaching it more head on. Mm. I personally, the old way wasn't working, just like sweeping it underneath the rug. That's my opinion. Mm. Interesting, guys. You can let me know in the comments down below. Should you try to deny stereotypes or do you kind of play along with them? Is it helpful or hurtful? What's the pros and the well, cons? I'll tell you this, playing along with them, Andrew, it clearly goes viral. Yeah. Well, anyway, guys, let us know what you think in the comment section below. I think there's a lot of good arguments on all sides. Until next time, we don't hop out, boys. We out. Peace. Peace.